Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create an audio player within Flutter. This audio player will work on the web, desktop, as well as mobile applications, and our audio player is going to be jam-packed with functionality. Not only are we going to be streaming audio from the network, but I'll also show how you can access asset files and play their audio. I'm also going to be showing you how you can show a progress bar to actually depict to the user how far along they're in streaming their audio, and we'll have the ability to change the volume of the audio clip being played, as well as the speed. So to get started, just initialize an empty Flutter project project and after that I am going to be adding all of my code within a stateful class that I've created called home page and this home page is going to be set as the home property for the material app within our application so with this said the first thing that we're going to be doing is adding the dependencies which are required to build our application we are going to be using two dependencies the first is going to be the just audio plugin which is basically going to allow us to have the functionality of playing audio so I'm going to go to pubspec.yaml and then under dependencies I'm going to be adding it and then after this I'm also going to be using audio video progress bar, which is a useful widget we can use to display the progress of the actual audio files or video files that we are streaming. So once this is done, I am going to be coming to home page, and this is where we are going to be adding all of our functionality. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a variable which will allow us access to our player, and then we can use that to, and then we can use that to actually play audio files. So for that, I'll do final underscore player, and then I'm going to set this to be a new instance of audio player. With this done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be overriding the init state function. And within init state, the first thing that I'll do is that after the super classes init state function has been called, I am going to be calling widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized. And after this, I am going to be calling a function called setup audio player like so. Once this is done, the next thing that I am going to be doing is actually creating this function. And then here is where I'm going to be creating my setup audio player function. So this function is going to return a future of a void. Then I'm going to say it's going to be called setup, setup audio player. And after this, this function is going to be marked asynchronous. Within this function, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be setting up a listener function on the playback event stream. And I'm going to say that we're going to be listening to it and we're going to be listening to the events. And then in the case that we get an error, then what I'm going to be doing is that I am going to be taking that error in. And after I have access to that error and the stack trace, so I am going to be printing that error to the console like so. And besides this, what I'll also do is that I am going to be adding some text before I print the error in the string saying a stream error occurred, and then I'm going to interpolate this error within the string like so. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be adding a try catch block. So I'm going to do try and then catch. Um, and here I'm going to say that if we get an error, then what we do is that we simply print their error. And we're going to say that we had an error loading the audio source. And then within our try block is where we're going to be trying to actually load the audio file from wherever we want to load it into our player. So to do that, what I'll do is that I'm going to say underscore player. And then from there, I'm going to do set audio source. And then we have to give it an audio source. So for that, I'm going to be for now, firstly streaming from the internet. So for that, I'll do audio source dot URI. And this is where I'm going to be pasting in the URI for the actual audio file. So I got this audio file from a website called Orange Free Sounds. So this is what we're going to be using. And then after this, I forgot to mention that we have to also call the URI dot parse function. Then we need to pass the actual string URL to it, and then it'll parse the URI into the appropriate format and then pass it appropriately. What I'm now going to be doing is that I am going to be coming to our build function and within our build function I'm going to be basically focusing on creating our UI. But before we do that I'm quickly going to run the application on the simulator, make sure that everything works and then resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that the application is running on our simulator, what I'm going to be doing is coming to my scaffold and then within this is where I'm going to be adding some things. So firstly, I'm going to add a app bar to my scaffold quickly. So I'll do that. And then it's going to show audio player. And then after this, I'm going to set the body attribute to be a safe area with a column and then the children for that column we are going to be defining. So within our scaffold, we'll have the body property and that body property is going to be set to 
safe area that safe area is going to have a child which will be a column and then this column is where we're going to be adding all of our actual code for all of the widgets that we're going to be displaying so for now i'm just going to leave this as empty and then the first thing that we are going to be doing is actually focusing on how we can display a button that we can press to play our audio and pause it so for that what i'll do is that i'll firstly within the children's list say that i'm going to call a function called playback control button and then after this I am going to come to the bottom of my class and here is where I'm going to be creating a function playing our audio. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that we're going to have a function which will return a widget. This will be called playback control button. And then this function will not take anything. Within this function, I'm going to return a stream builder. And the reason we're going to be using a stream builder is because we need access to the actual state of our player to determine what our button should look like and whether we're going to be pausing or actually resuming our video playback or playing it. So that's why we're going to be using a stream builder. Then our stream builder, before we actually define the stream and the actual builder, I'm going to say that it's going to have a type for the stream, which will be player state. And then the stream is going to be the underscore player dot. And then from here, I'm going to do player state stream. And then the builder function is going to take a context and a snapshot. So I'm going to add those in. And then it expects us to return a widget. So what are we going to be returning within this function? Well, for now, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be looping over the actual states and then determining what our actual widget should be. So I'll create a variable called final. I'm going to say that this is going to be the processing state and it's going to be equal to the snapshot dot data. And then if you have the data, it's going to be the actual processing state like so. Then I'm also going to do final and I'm going to do playing and this is going to be equal to our snapshot then if we have the data it's going to be equal to playing so this is a boolean value that lets us know if our player is playing or not so this snapshot data is going to be of type player state once this is done i'm going to do a if else statement so i'm going to do if our processing state is loading or buffering and I'm going to paste this in because it's very self-explanatory. Then what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be returning a container, which is going to be showing a loading indicator. And in the case, if playing is not equals to true, so if we're not playing, this means our audio is paused. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to return an icon button. And this icon button will have an icon size 64, a play error. And we're going to, when this icon is, or this button is pressed, call the player dot. And then from here, I'm going to do play like so. Then after this, I'm going to add an other else statement. And this else statement, I'm going to say that if the processing state is not equals to completed, that means that our audio is actually running. So in this case, we just want to basically pause our audio and show a button for actually pausing our audio. So for that, again, it's an icon button and I'm calling the player.pause function when it's pressed. And finally, at the end, what I'm going to do that if all of this is not the case, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to return an icon button with the same size and everything is just going to be icons.replay. And once this is pressed, what I want to do is that I want to do player.seek and I want to seek to duration dot zero. So I want to basically take our player to the very start and I want to replay our audio. And then for this, we actually need to define the function callback like so. So with this done, you can see that our actual play button is now being shown. If I restart my application, you are going to be seeing that we see a loading indicator. And once the stream has been loaded, we can click on the play button. And then we click on the play button, the audio starts playing. When we click on the pause, the audio stops playing. And this is how we basically do this. So once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be basically working on showing the actual progress of our audio bar. So for that, again, we're going to be doing a similar thing. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is actually going to my column. Then what I'll do here is that I am going to firstly create a row and I'm going to find the children for it. And then I'll take our playback control button and I will add that to the row. And then after this, I'm going to come back to the children's list for the column. And here I'm going to add a function call to a function called progress bar, which will be responsible for rendering the progress bar widget. Then I am going to come back and I am going to create a new function and it's going to return a widget. It's going to be called progress bar and it's basically going to also encompass a stream builder because we need to access some data from the player in order to determine what our actual progress bar should look like. So I'm going to say that we're going to return a stream builder and then this stream builder is going to have a stream and this stream is going to be underscore player dot and then we are going to be using the position stream 
this is going to be of type optional duration and then the builder for this is going to be same we're going to get a context and a snapshot so let me do that context comma snapshot come within the function and here i'm going to say that we are going to return a progress bar then this progress bar asks us for the progress in this case we are going to use the snapshot so I'm going to do snapshot dot data. And in the case that we don't have the data, then the progress is going to be duration dot zero, like so. Then the actual total is going to be our player duration, player dot duration. And in the case that the player duration is not available to us, then it's going to be duration dot zero. And then the last thing that I'm going to be adding is the actual buffered position. So this is up to where is our stream loaded into memory. For this, we're going to be using the buffered property and I'm going to do player dot buffered position like so and then do command save then I'm going to come to my actual progress bar function and it's telling me that this function isn't defined so I'll come back and I'll set it here like so and then do command save and now we are seeing our progress bar so if I reload our application you're going to see that it's zero zero as soon as the audio gets loaded and we start playing you can see that now the progress bar is moving along with the audio and it's showing us what the total is and where we are right now so the last thing that I want to do is that when we actually drag this audio progress bar that we go to the appropriate location within our audio file so how do we do this? Well, for this, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be implementing the onSeek function on our progress bar. It's going to give us a duration, and this is going to be the duration which we have selected through using the progress bar. So we want our player to go to this. So for this, I'm going to do player.seek, and then I am going to say that we're going to seek to the duration that is provided to us. Then I will do command save, and now if I seek to a specific position, the audio starts playing from there, as you can see. The next thing that I want to do is actually implement the sliders that allow us to control the volume and the actual playback speed for our audio clip. So for that, what I'm going to be doing is that I am going to be coming to my column. I'm going to go to the row. And then for that children list, I'm going to be now adding a new function call, which is basically going to be responsible for rendering those widgets. So before the playback control button, I am going to be adding a call to our control buttons function. Then what I'll do is that I'm going to go to the end of my class. And here I'm going to be creating this function, which will be responsible for rendering our control button. So it's will be a function returns a widget it's called control buttons then within this i'm going to say that we're going to be returning a column and this column is going to have a children's list like so and within this children's list is where we're going to be defining our control button then for the control buttons the first children is going to be an actual slider which will allow us to change the speed of the actual audio file being played so for this we are again going to be using a stream builder the stream is going to be player and then from here i'm going to do speed stream and then the builder is going to be the same thing that we've been making it's just a function that takes in a context and a snapshot and then it expects us to return a widget back to it like so so within this function, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be saying that I'm going to be returning a row and this row will have a children's list like so. And within this children's list, the first thing is going to be an icon. And after the icon, we are going to be adding something else as well. So what do we add after the icon? Well, after the icon, I'm going to be adding a slider widget and the slider widget requires a value. This is going to be the snapshot.data. That's gets given to us and in the case that's not available then we're going to be setting that to none and once this gets changed then what are we going to be doing well once this gets changed we are going to be given a value to us and then what we are going to be doing is that we are going to be calling a function within this callback function for on changed which is going to be await player.set speed and the speed is going to be the value that gets given to us i want to restrict this slider two specific values so for that i'm going to set a minimum value of one and the maximum value of three and then after this i want the slider to not be smoothly draggable i want it to be draggable in sections so for that what i'll do is that i'm going to create divisions for this slider and i'm going to say that it's going to be equally divided into three divisions so now we can go between level one two three and four like this to change the playback speed so once this is done, let's test it out. So to test it out, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to play my audio. And then if I increase the playback speed, you're going to see that the audio starts moving much faster. So once this is working, the next thing that I am going to be doing is that I'm going to be copying this same stream builder widget 
and I'm going to be pasting it again within the main column. And then what I'm going to be doing is that for the other stream builder, I am going to be setting this to dot volume stream. And then after this, I'm going to also change the volume's minimum value to be zero. Divisions are going to be four this time. And then in the on changed, when we get the value, I'm going to do underscore player dot set volume this time. And I'm going to be setting this to the value that gets passed and then do command save. Then for the icon, I am going to be changing this to the actual icon for volume. And let's just do up because I thought that works. And now if I actually start playing my audio stream and I increase the volume, it increases the volume. And if I decrease the speed, it starts to decrease the speed. And if I take it to the very end, then it mutes the audio as you can see. So the last thing that I want to do is actually have the ability for us to actually select the source from where we're going to be playing our audio. For that, what I'm going to be doing is that first thing I'm going to be going to the top of my home page file. Here, I'm going to be creating an enumerated type and I'm going to say that this is going to be audio source option. And I'm going to say that this is going to be of either network or asset and you can do whatever other variations that you want. Then once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that for my setup audio player function, I'm going to be modifying that a little bit and I'm going to be saying that it's going to expect a parameter that's going to be passed to it and it's going to be audio source option called option. Then I'm going to go to my init state function for setup audio player state. Once our app gets initialized, the first audio source option that we send to it is network and then whenever the player wants, they can change it. From here, what I'm going to be now doing is actually working on creating the function which will be responsible for rendering the buttons, allowing us to switch between the source. So for that, I'm going to say that we're going to have a function called source select, and then I'm going to copy this function name. And then I am going to be basically coming down the build function. I'm going to create a new function which will return a widget. It's going to be called source select, like so. Then within source select, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be saying that we will return a row and this row is going to have a children's list. You by now know the gist of things. And then for the children's list is where we're going to be placing our actual buttons. So the first is going to be a material button, which is going to be having a color of blue and then a child which is going to be text network like so. And then after this, for this material button, I'm going to add the on pressed property to be something which we will just define right now. But for now, I'll just leave that empty. Then what I'll do is that I am going to be copying this material button again, and I'm going to be pasting it one more time. And this time I'm going to say that this is going to be called asset, the color will remain the same. Then once the network button gets pressed, that what I want to do is that I want to call setup audio player, and I want to do audio source option dot and then network. And in the case that we click on the asset, then what I want to do is that I want to call setup audio player and I want to do dot asset like so. After this, I will just do command save and make sure that everything is being rendered as intended. Let's just change the color to be purple because blue doesn't work. So purple and then purple. And then that's pretty much all we have to do. So the last thing that we need to do is that within our setup audio player function, we need to just tweak the logic a little bit. What we need to do before we actually set the audio sources, we need to actually check what our source is. So in the case, if our source or the option that gets passed to us is the actual audio source network, then we call this function, which is await audio source, and we do URI. And then in the case that this is not the case, so else if the option is equals to audio source option dot, and then I'm going to do net asset, then what we do is that we call the same function, but this time we don't pass it audio source dot URI. What we do is that we pass it something else. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to do audio source dot and then this time I'm going to do asset. You can do file as well and then you're going to be passing it a file path. So this is how you do it. But for audio source dot asset, we need to basically pass in a path to an asset file. So for that, within my actual source code, I'm going to create a new folder first and I'm going to call this assets like so. Then within this, I'm going to create a new folder called audio. And then within this audio folder, I'm going to reveal this within Finder. And then here is where I'm going to be basically copying and pasting in the actual audio file that I want to put into it, like so. So I got this free audio file from Pixabay. It's a cool website that I definitely recommend you take a look at. So once I have the audio file, 
within my assets folder, I need to tell Flutter that it needs to make these assets available to the actual application. So for that, we are going to come back to pubspec.yaml, uncomment the assets, and then for the next line, I'm going to add the assets slash audio folder to be included under the assets. And then once this is done, I'm going to stop running my application and then I'll restart it just to make sure that the assets get loaded up properly. And then once our application is running again, hopefully everything should be working. So the last thing that we need to do is that we need to set the audio source dot asset to be the specific audio file that we want to load. So in this case, it's going to be assets slash audio slash, and then it's going to be Pixabay audio, which is the name of our file dot MP3 like so. With this done, I'll restart my application and let's firstly click on network. Everything seems to work. So I'll click on the play button and the audio starts playing. I can increase the speed and it works. And if I click on asset, then it starts to actually stream the audio from the asset file and it's working as well as well. I can increase the speed. I can decrease it. I can increase the volume. I can mute it and everything seems to be working. And if you go to the very end, once we reach the very end, it shows us the replay button. We click on that and we go back to the start of our audio stream. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, you can leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.